Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. So, it's been two years now since we last put together a top five best GPUs video. That's because for two years now, the market has been at complete shambles. During that time, we've basically just told you guys to hold out if you can. Uh, we spent some time investigating secondhand alternatives, though admittedly, there's not much appeal there either. It does appear as though things are slowly starting to improve, ever so slightly. And while we do have a long way to go yet, many of you have been telling us that you're just completely overweighting and you just wanna buy something now and get gaming. So what should you get? To answer that question, we're gonna cover five price ranges starting from the bottom, so let's get to it. All right, so for those of you looking to spend as little as possible, the cheapest new graphics card is unfortunately the Radeon RX 6500 XT. Basically, in our opinion, it's a bad product with numerous issues and it just costs too much for what it is. Having said all of that, there really is no alternative for under $450 US, at least if you want to shop new. So if you desperately want a new graphics card and the used market is out of question, well, this is it. I personally, I think I'd just rather wait it out or perhaps do something else with my time and money other than PC gaming, as much as that would hurt. That's because spending $270 US on a graphics card that can't even achieve 60 FPS in new games such as Cyberpunk 2077 and Dying Light 2 using the lowest possible quality settings at 1080p, that's just too much of a rough deal for me. And I feel like this product is gonna age like milk. Alternatively, if you do have access to a healthy used market, I recommend looking at the Radeon RX 570 4 gigabyte, which can be typically had for under $200 US, and in many ways is arguably a better product. Or for similar money, so around $270 US, a used 4 gigabyte 5500 XT or GTX 1650 Super, they're better products in my opinion, so perhaps consider those. Of course, if you do happen to manage to find a 6500 XT for the $200 US MSRP, then it's probably the way to go. Though be aware, if it does manage to hit that price in a few months from now, there is a good chance other GPUs will have also dropped in price. So make sure you check all your options before buying. As we've just established, you're not really getting much for $270 US with the 6500 XT. So what do you need to spend in order to really enjoy today's games at respectable quality settings while also having enough headroom to be usable for years to come? For that, the Radeon RX 6600 is now the go-to option in our opinion, with some models hitting $450, though admittedly most are still up over $500. Here in Australia, base model RX 6600s can be had for $650 Australian, which is roughly what you'll pay for an RTX 3050. And the situation for Nvidia looks even worse over in the US. Newegg, for example, has the cheapest RTX 3050 listed for $600 US. And while that is from a third party seller, it's still a very high price and it is the cheapest card currently listed. Meanwhile, the RTX 3060, which was expected to compete with the RX 6600, that costs upwards of $750 US. So right now there's no alternative to the RX 6600, new or used, so that's a pretty straightforward pick. And while we weren't thrilled with the 6600 upon release, in the current market, it has shaped up to be a solid deal with good availability. It's also worlds better than the 6500 XT, given it supports more than two display outputs, twice the PCIe bandwidth, twice the VRAM capacity, hardware encoding, and AV1 decoding. Basically, it's a proper graphics card. It also wrecks the RTX 3050 for standard rasterization performance, so unless the GeForce GPU is at least 20% cheaper than the RX 6600, there's just no point buying it. So in short, if you have to buy a GPU right now, the Radeon RX 6600 is your best bet. Still, if you're hell-bent on buying a graphics card right now, and you want even more performance, but you don't want to spend over $1,000 US, what's the best option? In my opinion, that would be the Radeon RX 6700 XT, which at its original MSRP was actually quite a good product that really gave the RTX 3070 a run for its money. The 6700 XT delivers around 40% more performance than the 6600. It supports full PCIe x16 bandwidth. It increases the VRAM capacity to 12 gigabytes, 
and in today's market can be purchased for $900 US. So you are effectively paying a 100% price premium for around 40% more performance, which is why we recommend, if you can, to go with the RTX 6600 instead. Still, for roughly this level of performance for NVIDIA, you'll be paying significantly more as the RTX 3070 starts at $1,100 US, with the newer 3070 Ti starting at around $1,200 US. So unless you're buying specifically to play games with ray tracing enabled, the 6700 XT is a far better deal at $900 US, even if you were willing to edge over the $1,000 barrier. So given how bonkers the market is right now, and really it has been for two years, cards that once seemed, let's say stupid, maybe aren't as stupid anymore. I guess depending on how you look at it. Take the Radeon RX 6900 XT for example, like the GeForce RTX 3090, we felt this was a really dumb product upon release. The MSRP saw it priced a little over 50% higher than the 6800 XT for single digit performance gains. It was about 8% faster on average. Apart from the mere 8% performance increase, you got nothing extra with the 6900 XT. The memory capacity and bandwidth was the same. So other than a few extra cores that enabled that 8% increase, it was essentially the same product. However, in today's market, the 6900 XT typically only costs around 10% more than the 6800 XT. So if you're willing to part with $1,500 US, you might as well get the flagship model. As for Nvidia, well, they're once again kind of nowhere in terms of pricing. The base model RTX 3080 starts at $1,600, and given it is typically slower than the 6900 XT, that doesn't really make sense. The newer 12 gigabyte version starts at $1,650, though most models are up around $1,800, while the 3080 Ti start at a truly absurd $2,000 US. Finally, just for fun, though I do realize some people actually buy these extreme high-end products, who makes the best gaming GPU? Obviously, this is a battle between the Radeon RX 6900 XT and GeForce RTX 3090, both of which I called stupid and ultimately pointless in my day one reviews, because any semblance of a normal market would see both representing horrible value. But as we've just seen today, you can easily make an argument for purchasing the 6900 XT over the 6800 XT, and they are fairly in line when it comes to cost per frame, while the 6900 XT should maintain a higher resale value. So what about the RTX 3090? Firstly, I do believe from a technical viewpoint, the 3090 is a better product. Not only does it support DLSS, which is very beneficial for boosting performance at high resolutions, but it also offers vastly superior ray tracing performance. How much you care about that will depend on you. Then when it comes to rasterization performance, it's typically the faster product at extreme resolutions, such as 4K. And with 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory, it is quite appealing to those of you who care about bragging rights. Given that the GeForce RTX 3090 is the best graphics card money can buy, though it probably will hand that honor over to the 3090 Ti if and when that thing gets released. The only problem with the RTX 3090, of course, is the price. And while pricing for this product has always been a problem, it's a much bigger problem in the current market. Initially, it was set to cost $500 more than the 6900 XT, which is a hefty 50% premium, but today, the typical asking price is more like $3,100, making it at least 94%, 94% more expensive than the 6900 XT. Basically, you could buy two 6900 XTs for the price of a single RTX 3090. It's just that crazy. So while I do believe that the 3090 is technically the superior product, I would much rather a pair of 6900 XTs and maybe just give one to a friend or pocket the roughly $1,500 US and put it towards a nice family holiday, something along those lines. So in conclusion, if you have to buy a new graphics card right now, you really should be looking at a Radeon GPU given how out of line GeForce pricing is. And to best illustrate that point, I've put together a graph that compares Radeon and GeForce GPU pricing over at Newegg. Right now, the cheapest current generation product from Nvidia is the RTX 3050, and it's coming in at an absurd $600 US, which is a complete joke for that level of performance. 
especially given that for the same money you can land the much faster 6600 XT, which is somewhere around 50-60% to 60 faster. The RTX 3060 is also typically slightly slower than the 6600 XT, yet right now it costs 27% more. And then we have the 3060 Ti, which matches the 6700 XT in terms of pricing at $900. Admittedly, the 6700 XT is slightly faster, but this is certainly one of the better matchups for Nvidia. The RTX 3070 jumps up to $1100, which is a 22% premium over the 6700 XT for on average just 5% more performance. Then we have the 3070 Ti, which jumps up to $1250, which is slightly more than what you'll typically pay for an RX 6800, which is a slightly faster product. Still, at the more mid-range, let's say, segment from the 3060 Ti to the 3070 Ti, Nvidia does okay. Still worse in terms of value, but much better than what we see at the very low end where they have absolutely nothing, and then the high end where pricing gets well out of hand. For example, the RTX 3080 comes in at around $1,600, which is more than what you'll pay for the 6900 XT. And that's bad given that the Radeon GPU is a much faster product, offering around 15% more performance at 4K. And things just get worse for the 12GB version of the 3080, and even worse again for the 3080 Ti. Then we have the RTX 3090, and well, I've already discussed that part, so let's just move on. So that's where we are right now. Pricing is still bad, but availability of some models appears to be improving. So hopefully things will continue to trend in the right direction. Now, because of how much of a mess the market has been in over the last two years, or really the last year in particular, I did stop putting together big benchmark videos comparing competing models in a sort of head-to-head -head fashion. With so many of you having recently requested that I get back to those big benchmark videos, and the fact that you know pricing does seem to be settling in now, it is, as I said, trending slowly in the right direction, at least fingers crossed, I hope it is, I thought I would get back to doing that. And I think I'll start shortly by comparing the 12 gigabyte version of the RTX 3080 to the Radeon RX 6900 XT, which is coming in around $300 cheaper. After that, maybe the RX 6800 versus RTX 3070 Ti. That comparison will probably make sense if current pricing holds. And then I'll continue down the list in an effort to update all of our big comparisons. So make sure you are subscribed for that. And if you enjoyed this video, give it one of those. Much appreciated. Also, if you'd like to become a Harbour Box community member, we have Floatplane or Patreon. Subscribe to either of those and you'll get access to our exclusive Discord server. Uh, Tim and I do a monthly live stream, behind the scenes content, Q&A, a lot of cool stuff there. So if you're interested, check it out. But if not, perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.